NT Media Productions presents I'm Making It Happen. I'm Making It Happen is brought to you in part by Cost You Less, your best value on St. Croix. Like us on Facebook. Text Cost You Less, one word, to the number 55678 for discounts and promotions. And you are happily tuned in to I'm Making It Happen on the Reef 103.5 FM with yours truly, Nicole Tyson. And we are here every Wednesday from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. And on I'm Making It Happen, we discuss how we can make it happen in our minds, bodies, finances, business, and culture, despite the inevitable and not so pleasant challenges. And today, our conversation will be surrounding major diseases people are confronted with and the possibility of the reversal of illnesses such as chronic diseases like diabetes, high blood pressure, and more, it's, and including cancers. And we're going to delve into this subject with Haru Ofori Atta. Before we go into the topic, I definitely want to say good morning to everyone in the USVI, the British Virgin Islands, St. Kitts and Nevis, and anywhere you are in the Caribbean, say by nose tuned in. Dominica Tortola Barbados. And of course, I want to say good morning to all those listening live on the reefbroadcasting.com from the east to west coast of the US and wherever you are in the world. Also, I want to say good morning to our Facebook um, live viewers and anyone watching the replay after this. I want to thank you for tuning in every Wednesday. We have Heru Ofori Atta who joins us today um, virtually um, or by phone and also on the Facebook page at I'm Making It Happen. And um, Haru obtained a degree in biology and neuroscience from Tufts in University in Boston. Um, and he has a Juris Doctorate from Northeastern University School of Law that's located in Boston. Um, that's a law degree. And he is the creator, manufacturer, and inventor of natural health products. And, and he's also a researcher. Haru is also the founder of Herbal Products, where they have had success in reversing diverse illnesses. So without any further delay, thank you so much, Haru, for being um, with us today. Thank you for having me. So, um, you know, you have such a plethora of background in um, illnesses and, um, and that you've had success in reversing various illnesses um, on different levels. Um, we met prior during the time I worked um, with Senator Nelson um, and crafting the medical cannabis um, legislation. And I know that we discussed back then about you know cancers and how you were able to reverse certain cancers. And before we go into any more detail, I do wanna say if you have any illnesses, you of course wanna still consult your physician um, for just the different methods that we're gonna be speaking on. But we're just sharing some information that could possibly be of benefit. Tell us how you got right. into, just got involved in this overall. Sure, um, it's a very interesting story. So um, my father was a well-known uh, surgeon, general surgeon in Chicago area. So I grew up in a family of medicine. Uh, my grandfather was a well-known pharmacist in Ghana. Uh, as I said, my father, practice of medicine in Chicago. He was the chief of staff for uh, St. Bernard Hospital in Chicago, which is a very big hospital in Chicago. And he worked at a few other hospitals. And um, he ended up getting high blood pressure through dietary habits and the stress also of being a uh, general surgeon, which is also an emergency room doctor. And he uh, was on high blood pressure medication for years. And he ended up getting uh, acute renal failure. So his kidneys died out on him and he was on dialysis for about seven years and he ended up passing away in 2002. And uh, because uh, he was a doctor earlier in my life, I wanted to walk in his footsteps. So when I was in university, I was pre-med uh, where I got a degree in bio biology and also psychology, biopsychology, which they would call neuroscience. I switched directions and went into law school uh, after university and practiced law for some time after I graduated from law school, and then uh, retired and became an artist and entrepreneur. 
through technology and also studied uh, solar uh, installation and design where I you know, got certified in that. And uh, in around 2014, I started doing some research where I ran across a documentary called Run From The Cure uh, from Canada. There's a man from Canada who his name is Rick Simpson, and he was on record for reversing cancer for a couple thousand people. And this documentary called Run From The Cure, anyone can see on YouTube, uh, I thought it was very interesting and very important that this information was there, but it was not mainstream information. This was around 2014. Um, when, you know, people are starting to talk about medicinal cannabis, there were a few states that had passed medicinal cannabis laws. And um, so I started doing experiments on my own. I went to Jamaica and started making my own cannabis oils and my own extraction methods using coconut oil, whereas um, Rick Simpson was using naphtha, which is a paint thinner, which I thought was toxic if it wasn't done correctly. So I decided to use something that was non-toxic, which was coconut oil extractions. Um, I started doing a lot of lecturing on that around the intersection of law and uh, health, where uh, we looked at medicinal marijuana being uh, the most prescribed medicine that used to be in the US and the Canadian pharmacopoeia until the 1930s, until it was actually made illegal. And it was made illegal uh, through nefarious means. We won't get into the history, but uh, before the 1930 Marijuana Stamp Act, uh, it was actually legal and it was prescribed widely for a wide range of illnesses. Uh, but through politics, it became illegal. That's a whole different uh, interview. But um, when I started doing my own extractions because of my science background and my own experiments, uh, I would give the oils to people and people would give me back their, give me their feedback. And we had people who had cancer, uh, and they took the oils and they started doing better and their cancer started going to remission. Their tumors were shrinking. And, uh, it got to the point where I got well known for the cannabis oil lectures and, uh, the cannabis oil extraction methods that I used to teach people. And, uh, the problem is, is that Cannabis is a Schedule One drug, uh, so shipping it across the United okay. States uh, through the mail. I don't want. I know that's an awesome story, but I don't want you to go into all of that yet. Because oh, oh, we're gonna. I'm, I'm stopping it right. We're, we're getting. We're getting right to where you where you want to go. Just okay. give me about 15 more seconds. So uh, because it was illegal, I had to find another plant, and that plant was the leaves of the olive tree, which I found the leaves of the olive tree actually work better than cannabis because uh, people don't get high. And then also uh, it's a lot cheaper and it works better with high blood pressure and diabetes. It's a very strong anti-inflammatory and it also has anti-cancer effects where it kills tumors uh, based on scientific studies between nine and 12 days. And, you know, then we can get into the results that we've had that you would be able to see on our website, herbalresults.net. Can these illnesses really be reversed, um, especially like diabetes, and then the effects that these diseases cause on the body. Right. So, I mean, so when we look at the uh, top killers in the United States, uh, Saint, uh, I mean, Johns Hopkins did a study in 2017. They found that the number one killer for people in the United States is heart disease, which we mentioned when we talk about high blood pressure, hypertension. The second killer uh, is listed as cancer. And the third killer uh, used to be respiratory illnesses. And this was before COVID, but the third killer was respiratory illnesses. But that third killer actually got overtaken by what was used to be number four. And number three is iatrogenics. Um, I'm not sure, Nicole, do you know what iatrogenics is? Never heard of it. Okay. Iatrogenics literally means death by doctor. So death by doctor is actually the third leading cause of death in the United States, according to a Johns Hopkins study in 2017. It actually overtook respiratory illnesses. And I was even shocked to find out the respiratory illnesses was that high. Then after that comes diabetes. So when we're talking about things that kill people, um, particularly in communities of people of African descent, you're seeing uh, 
really, you're seeing high blood pressure, you're seeing cancer, you're seeing diabetes, you're seeing respiratory illnesses, and you're seeing iatrogenics, death by doctor. And death by doctor many times is just overdosing of, on pharmaceutical medications. Now, when we're talking about diabetes, and even when we're talking about high blood pressure, these are all problems of inflammation. What I mean by that is, is that when you start to look at uh, diabetes, you're looking at a pancreas problem, a problem with your pancreas. And many times it's an inflammation situation going on with the pancreas, which is also marked by pancreatitis. Now, when you start looking at medical, medical nomenclature, you start finding uh, the root, uh, the suffix, the root word, then you find the suffix. The root word will be the organ, and then you will have the suffix. The suffix will usually be an itis, right? So arthritis, pancreatitis, uh, arth um, uh, gingivitis. You would hear things like uh, um, prostatitis. So anything that's followed by an itis actually means inflammation. Itis means inflammation. And the root word of inflammation is flame, which is fire, something hot. Now, when we look at sugar, we see what sugar can do to the teeth. And people who have diabetes, a lot of times, you know, the old time people will say, I got sugar. I'm sure you've heard that term, right? Yes. Yeah. So what's happening is, is that your body's not able to really process sugar uh, properly, glucose properly. And insulin is the balancing factor for uh, glucose. And so what happens is, is that you have uh, an imbalance going on in the body. And many times that is exacerbated or even started by inflammation. And the main culprit for inflammation is sugar, particularly non-complex sugars, simple sugars. And what they do is, is that when you start looking at foods that have high glycemic index, these are foods that turn into simple sugars in your body and your pancreas is actually not able to process those sugars properly. It develops inflammation. You get pancreatitis. Now, here's what we know about sugar. The hardest part of your body are your teeth and your bones, right? The mm -hmm. teeth are the hardest part of your body. And sugar can burn a hole into your teeth. They call that cavities. Mm -hmm. So if sugar can burn a hole into your teeth, what is sugar doing to your soft internal organs? If your teeth, yeah, I see, I see that you just had a light bulb moment. If your teeth can have a hole burned into them, from sugar, what is sugar doing to your soft internal organs? So what we're finding out is, is that inflammation is simply taking root in different parts of people's bodies based on opportunistic DNA profiles. So whatever your genetic profile is, whatever your body might be weakened, where inflammation can take root, that is where you're going to find the disease show up in your body. So if you have a uh, genetic makeup where you have a weak pancreas, you're going to get diabetes in form of inflammation showing up in your pancreas. If you have uh, a situation where you have joint issues and inflammation takes root in your joints, you get arthritis. You see the itis start to come in. So arthritis means inflammation of the joints. Gingivitis means inflammation of the gums. Conjunctivitis means inflammation of the eyes. Pancreatitis, inflammation of the pancreas. Prostatitis, inflammation of the prostate. And it goes on and on and on. And what we're finding is, is that inflammation is the root cause of many of these illnesses, including cancer. That's why we've found studies that say that cancer feeds off of sugar. So the worst thing that you can do is to eat sugary foods when you have a cancer diagnosis, it's going to feed the tumors. The worst things you can do, really, a diabetic is somebody who's allergic to sugar. Let's just call it that. You're allergic to sugar. And people who are also um, with hypertension are literally allergic to sugar and table salt. And the table salt is not natural salt. Table salt is the salt that comes from uh, actually industrial waste from cement factories. Then you have sea salt, which is the more natural salt. Mm -hmm. So when you go to the doctor and the doctor tells you you have hypertension or high blood pressure or you have diabetes, the first thing that doctor should do is start asking you about your dietary habits. 
You see, if you go to a doctor and what's happening many times is that these doctors are not even asking about dietary habits. You just go in, they will take your blood sugar. They'll say it's high. It's over 200. It's over 250. You've got diabetes or onset diabetes. And then they will take your blood pressure and your blood pressure is a certain reading, something like 150 over 90. They'll say you have high blood pressure, but they'll never ask you what you eat on a regular basis. And what they don't, what people don't understand is that most doctors have no understanding of nutrition. They only take a few hours of nutrition in medical school. And what's going on is that anytime you go to a health provider and they do not ask you about your diet, that means that they don't understand health. They understand disease and the pathology of disease, but they don't understand real health. And so what has happened is, is that the medical profession has become a profession of people who just prescribe pharmaceutical medications. Wow. So over 40, over 40, most people over 40, you will go into their, their um, bathroom. It's now called a medicine cabinet. And they are on pharmaceuticals because that is what their doctor is trained to give them. That is the standard of care. When you have high blood pressure, you're told, and even diabetes, you're, ta you're, you're told to take certain uh, pills. And these pills usually are called ACE inhibitors. Now, ACE inhibitors, Nicole, stand for angiotensin converting enzyme. ACE inhibitors are given to people with hypertension and diabetes as well. And I have a study from the American Heart Association where anyone can go to my website, herbalresults.net, to show that ACE inhibitors cause acute renal failure. The studies are there. This is from American I'm Heart. You're listening to I'm Making It Happen on the Reef 103.5 FM with yours truly, Nicole Tyson. And we have on the line Haru Ofori Atta. And before the break, we're discussing um, you know, chronic diseases and how we can reverse them, but the, I guess, so the, how they're created, how they started and then how they manifest and get, you know, even worse. So before the break, you were talking about the, um, the specific drug, was yes, it? Yes, and ACE inhibitors. ACE inhibitors, okay. Mm -hmm. So what happens is, is that uh, you're going 20, 30 years eating inflammatory foods. What are inflammatory foods? These are foods, and we're gonna to get to the ACE inhibitors. These are foods that cause inflammation in the body. And many times the foods that people are eating because of the standard American diet, uh, these are processed foods. These are foods that are made in the laboratory. These are foods that the body actually doesn't really recognize because these are not natural foods. The body is a natural body, which means that the body integrates with those things in that are made in nature. However, when things are made in a laboratory and given to you as food, your body actually doesn't even recognize it and has an immune response to much of the food that you're eating because it's actually foreign material. Now, what happens is, is that every time you eat, you're getting an immune response. So now your immune system is being overworked three times a day. That's why when you see elderly people, they have certain characteristics, right? An elderly person has the characteristics, the characteristics of somebody who just ran a marathon. They walk slow, they're hunched over and all that. However, you can look at someone who's 60, who looks like they're 80 years old and someone who's 60, who looks like they're 30 years old. We've all seen people like that. And a lot of it boils down to their dietary habits. Are you eating a diet that's stimulating your immune system every single time? Or are you eating a diet that gives your immune system rest and gives your immune system some type of uh, ability to rejuvenate itself? And that's why you have studies that show that when people go when people fast for a couple of days, the immune system gets completely rebuilt. That's because the immune system is taking a break. Now, when the immune system breaks down, that's when these chronic illnesses start forming. What happens is, is that you then go to the doctor, the doctor gives you these medications, particularly when you get high blood, high blood pressure. The most popular medication given to people with high blood pressure is called lisinopril, which is an ACE inhibitor. And according to the American Heart Association, and I can give you a citation because I have the study right in front of me, it's a 2001 study. And the title of the study is Renal Considerations in Angiotensin Converting Enzyme Inhibitor Therapy. And it says very clearly, and this is very important because we're seeing an increase in kidney failure with people in our communities. And the reason is, is that the doctors have not made a correlation between the drugs that they're giving people for high blood pressure and diabetes and kidney failure. You, if you go to a uh, dialysis clinic, Nicole, you will see 20 people on dialysis, 19 of them are on high blood pressure medication. 
And I've gotten into to debates with a lot of doctors around this, and a lot of them are not even aware that the medications that they're give, giving people causes acute renal failure. I mean, these are real debates I've had with doctors where I have to show them the studies. Because what happens is that a lot of people get out of medical school and they do, they do no supplemental research. And you did not need to be an A student to actually get a degree uh, for medical school. So I find a lot of doctors actually not on top of their field. They are not even aware of the side effects of many of the medications that they give people. And this is real. I mean, this is not something that I made up. This is real life because I deal with people every single day that the medical establishment has failed. So, so when I said that, I just have yes. a question. So what are some of the things that individuals can do since we're talking yeah. about, because we want to give them empowering information. So we Absolutely. understand that doctors, and you know, I, you know, we, we do incorporate a lot of natural things to help us with our, um, with our, with our yeah, bodies absolutely. and whatnot. So we want to give them some tangible things. So what are some things that they can do yep. or incorporate that can help to, like you said, um, boost, be an immune system boost, um, yeah. booster and possibly reverse some of these illnesses? Okay. So the, the main thing that you have to do, the first thing that you have to do is you're going to have to change your diet. Your diet needs to be gluten-free. That means that you're going to cut out wheat and you're going to cut out sugar. You're going to cut out dairy. Any flour that you use has to be gluten-free. You're going to cut out white rice because white rice has arsenic and it also has a high glycemic index. It converts into sugar in the body. And you're going to cut out table salt. So just doing those things right there, you're going to cut out soda drinks. And if you drink any juice, you're going to drink the juice straight from the fruit itself. You're not going to get any canned juices or bottled juices or carton juices because they add sugar to it. Sugar is the biggest culprit for inflammation in the world. So if you can just cut out sugar from your diet, you're going to be doing your health a great, great service. And then you're going to take anti-inflammatory herbs on a regular basis. We make olive leaf extract. We love that as an anti-inflammatory herb. Uh, also, turmeric is an anti-inflammatory herb. We do not make that, but it's something that I recommend. And if you're going to use turmeric, use it with oil. You're going to have to make it with oil. Do not make turmeric tea because um, the active ingredient curcumin is not water soluble. It is oil. Soluble. I also heard about turmeric. If you add pepper to it, is that? Yes, is black that pepper. pepper. Yes, black pepper makes the turmeric more bioavailable. So you will uh, use coconut oil, some heat, some turmeric, and some black pepper for anti-inflammatory concoction. You can use olive leaf extract. It's the best anti-inflammatory that I know of. Um, oregano. To... Sorry, go ahead. Yes. And CBD oil is also anti-inflammatory. We can talk about that as well, but it tends to be very expensive. So in terms of the the money that you would spend, you probably get a liquid uh, olive leaf extract and it will take care of the inflammatory responses that your body is uh, actually making from eating you know, dangerous foods, basically. And uh -huh. then... In, yeah. oh, sorry, in regards to like the, you said cut out table salt, but you said sea salt was something that's better, right? Yeah, sea salt is better, but people have to also remember that salt is not a spice. Okay. Right? Okay. Understood. People think salt is a spice. Salt was actually a food preservative before refrigerators were invented. Mm. And we got used to the taste of salt because people who live by the ocean, they used to salt their fish to actually preserve the fish meat. Mm. So we don't need that anymore now that we have refrigerators, but people are used to the taste and now they use salt as a spice, but salt is not a spice. So, so it's better to, to flavor it with spices. Yes, to flavor it. Yeah, exactly. So you can flavor your food with spices. You'd be a lot better off. And you, if you can cut out salt and sugar, you'd cut out most of the diseases that people are actually facing. So you're not irritating your body. Yeah, you're not, yeah, you're not you're, you're, yeah, basically your body is having um, a reaction. really a reaction to the food that you're eating. And it's a slow reaction. So by the time you hit 40, your body's hit enough, got enough. And then you got to get on this medication. And what we're trying to do is prevent people from getting on this medication and living more of a healthy lifestyle because these medications, these pharmaceutical medications are over the long run going to be toxic. For okay, you. so we're back. We're listening to I'm Making It Happen on The Reef with Nicole Tyson. And 
We have, um, if you're just tuning in with us, um, Haru Ofori Atta, she's joining the conversation. We're discussing the possibility of reversing major diseases and then how we just irritate the diseases that come upon us by the foods that we eat and how we can just eradicate that altogether. So we really appreciate Haru for being with us. But Haru, before we get into some more details, I have a couple questions we can just answer quickly. Can you please explain the different stages of diabetes? Right. So, um, you know, you have type one, you have type two diabetes. Type one is usually you're born with your body not being able to make insulin. Right. So that's when you see little children with diabetes. And then type two is a, what they would refer to as adult onset diabetes. And that's strictly through diet. Uh, that's your body uh, developing inflammation around the pancreas over time because of the foods that you're eating and particularly sugar. And your body no longer can process sugar properly and your body is not processing insulin and making insulin uh, properly. So what you what people should know is that I have diabetes in my family and I myself, when I was 20 years old, I was diagnosed with um, early stage diabetes and I had to completely change my diet and the stages that I was actually experiencing. So whenever I'm talking about these things, this is not something I read in a book. I can read it in a book and then I can corroborate it through real life. And what was happening with me, my early stages of um, diabetes, so I had to get my blood sugar tested, is that anytime you would eat anything that has a high glycemic index, which would be like white rice, um, juices, um, white flour, pastries, um, anything with sugar, the first thing is, is that your body crashes. Um, you get extremely tired. You want to sleep all day long. You'll start getting bleeding in the gums. Your vision will start getting very blurry um, in terms of needing glasses. That's why it affects, it affects your uh, vision. That's why a lot of people with diabetes for years end up getting blind. It affects your circulation. That's why people with diabetes end up getting foot amputations. It, it affects your circulation in your extremities. And then um, also you have to urinate a lot. You get a lot of passing of water um, out of your body. You start getting dehydrated. And actually a lot of people end up dying from diabetes through dehydration. People don't really realize that because what's happening is that the lack of um, being able to process sugar properly causes um, dehydration. And so what you do is you stay away from that thing that is causing you to the troubles. So you stop eating sugar, you stop eating wheat, you stop eating white flour, you stop eating white rice, you stop eating those things that would shoot, that cause a, a spike in your blood sugar. I mean, it's actually very simple. So that's what I did. And my symptoms all went away. I stopped being tired all the time. I didn't need to urinate. And when I'm talking about urinate, you, you, I'm talking about almost every hour you have to go use the bathroom like you got to use it real bad. Mm -hmm. And um, all that went away with me when I changed my diet. Um, my my vision got a lot better when I changed my diet. So it was my diet that was slowly killing me. And it was um, a predisposition that my DNA structure already had where in my family we have weak pancreases. So inflammation would find an opportunistic spot in my pancreas. My uncles have died of diabetes who didn't know any better. So what would happen is, is that they will give you insulin to take. And then if you take too much insulin, they give you sugar cubes. Mm. When sugar is the thing that's causing your problem in the first place. See how crazy that sounds? Mm 